Hi, welcome to Governance Bytes. I'm Mark Benicevic and it's my pleasure today to host Stuart Taylor, who is CFO of Partners Life, was previously CFO of ANZ Bank and led the managed funds at ANZ Bank, which is one of New Zealand's largest companes as well as New Zealand's largest bank. The, right? So New Zealand's largest bank and New Zealand's largest fund manager outside wow. of the super fund mark, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And uh, now come for a, a little bit more life back to a smaller corporate. Uh, and it's absolutely a pleasure to have you today. Thank you, Thank you very much to have someone of My your pleasure. experience in, yeah, in this conversation. You're very kind. <laughs> so and now having been in an exec in, a, in a, a number of very large companies, why is it important for the board of directors to have current financial information? It's, so if, if I, the, I, I probably best use an analogy, right? So if an organization was a, a body, a person's body, then your finances are the blood, right? So without, Without properly managed finances, the organisation is unlikely to function as effectively as it should do. So, if you sort of think about it that way, um, without without your without well well functioning finances, all the other bits are probably unlikely to work. Right. No matter how good they are. So, how important is the visibility of those finances, and how current should that information be for the board? Well, it's something in, in, so incredibly important, and. Look, I think with, with any financial information, there's sort of like every number tells a story, right? And I think you need to think about what are you, what are you trying to get out of the financial information that you want? But I think a few things are absolutely sacrosanct, right? One is I think have a set of expectations about what, um, what how you think your financial flow is gonna work during the, during the year. So that, that's, you know, we call that a budget, budget, we call that a plan, those sort of things. So I think it's really clear. Really important that you set a set of expectations. It's really important that having set those expectations that you understand how you're progressing against those. And I guess the, you know, the, the sort of accepted format in, in, in the financial world is, is to look at those sort of things monthly. Right. Okay. Um, but <laughs> what the interesting thing is a lot of the time financial information can be historic, right? You, you sort of, you know, you get to the end of a period and you sort of look back and you say, well, what happened? Um, the sort of next dimension of this is making sure you understand what some of the lead indicators are that will impact how your finances are performing. So, you know, we've got a whole load of those in life insurance or whatever. But I mean, if you think about a not-for-profit organisation, it might be the number of subscribers you've got or what your expectations of those might, might look like. So just starting to look at some of those metrics that might give you an indication of what your future financial health might, might, may or may not look like. Right. So two, so two really important sides of it, I think. And keeping um, up to date information about those metrics, so you can forecast where you're likely to be in. Future. Oh, and I mean, that, and and that's probably a bit I missed, right? Is you know, it, you you set a plan at the beginning of the year, and, and circumstances can change. You know, the economy may change. There may be a fundamental change in in pricing or fees or something like that. Mm. So don't don't hold yourself hostage to a plan that you set when you know things have changed, right? A flex and ad adapt that, but understand where you start and understand what, if you've reset where you think you're going, that you understand what the implications of that are as well. I guess for all businesses and organisations, the COVID pandemic was a great example of that, right? Where the whole game changed. Oh, a really, really good example. Yeah, you, I mean, you, yeah, you, I mean, I think every organisation went, went, oh well, I said I might have set a plan before COVID. There's no point in keep holding myself accountable necessarily to those targets because yeah, you're quite right. Something quite significant and in a lot of cases outside your control has changed but the important thing there is you've then thought about more broadly the, the, the exercise there is to go rather than holding yourself to a, an old plan go well what, what do I actually think the impact of this would be what are you know what, what assumptions can I make around I don't know membership subscriptions all those sort of things mm -hmm. and how they may they may change as a result of something like that. Yeah. So, so in summary, that a board of directors should have current both financial and non-financial information that helps them project finances, uh, create a plan at the start of the year, a budget, and then during the year, uh, track themselves against that budget, but also be flexible enough if things change to modify that and forecast through to the end of the year and, and how we're we tracking, what is it gonna look like at the Very end Very well year? summarized, Mark. Right, Very cool, well summarized, yeah. Now, commonly in a board of directors, people are, are come on with very different skill sets. So, how, uh, what do you do with board members who don't have finance backgrounds? How do they get involved in this conversation? Yeah, so I mean, there's two, there's two sides to this, and I think it's really important that not to get hung up on whether you've got a finance background or not, because I think at the end of the day, we we all we, we all we will all have our own household budgets to manage, right? And uh, an organisation, in some ways, is no different. Uh, 
how you think about your own individual finances, right? So your individual finances, you'll think about, well, how much money, you know, you'll think about how much money I'm earning, your income, and you think about what your outgoings are, right? right. And, and hopefully, the, and, and hopefully, I hope, um, certainly coming from a, uh, uh, an organisation that used to make sure people save for retirement, you'd, you'd put a bit away and save and those sort of things. So look, I think in, in an organisational context, what, what do I understand my outgoings to be? Um, what, am I, what am I investing in? What are some of the things that I want to build to future-proof the organisation or the business? Have I got capacity to invest in those? And, and do I, so then do I have enough income to cover that as right. well? And so that's the sort of you know that's the sort of income and expense side of things. I guess then there's a financial you know it's a bit like your own personal. I'll use the word balance sheet, right? But your own personal balance sheet, right? How much money have I got in the bank? What are my assets worth? What do I owe on those, right? To just to make sure because you you know you, on a day to day basis your income and expenses might look fine, but if you're running out of money in the bank um, for one for some reason, then you probably need to take a look at that. Right. So look, I, I think it's really. It's really important not to get, you know, sort of take a step back and sort of think about how these things things work. Yeah, yeah. And having your finger on the pulse of what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. and so I don't I don't think any of this. That's always interesting. I, I don't think any of this requires any great technical skill because it's actually what people sh you know probably think of on a day to day basis. Right. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. But so having, as someone who's reported to a number of the higher power boards in New Zealand. Uh, what is the role of the board of directors compared to the role of management? Yeah, well, the, the first thing there, and and this is this is this is the first thing, because a lot of people go on boards, go on boards because they've been they manage they they work right, and and that's your natural inclination. So the first thing is is, is governance, not management. Okay, and well, okay, that's easy. Well, what does that mean? So, I mean, that means that uh, that means you you know you're not down in the field, right? You're in the helicopter at ten thousand feet. Okay, so you're thinking about what the strategy. Of the organisation is what's your, what's the vision and I mean it's really interesting in a in a sort of I guess a not for profit organisation what's the purpose right right and I mean one contrast of a sort of commercial entity versus a not for profit is sometimes in a commercial entity profit is a is a goal right and and so sometimes that simplifies things whereas in a not for profit actually the work a board can do to set strategy vision and purpose I think is almost more important because some of those I guess commercial outcomes don't exist. So spend time there. And the other thing is, um, management should be making recommendations to, to to boards, and boards should be consuming those and considering those. But it's really important that those rec that management are held to account around making sure that the recommendations are transparent and credible and have a basis. And I, I think a board is there to. You know, constructively challenge and ask questions about why recommendation may be how it is. And probably the last strand to it is like a, a board members have the opportunity to work and exist outside of that organisation that they're on the board of. So bringing some of the lessons they may have learned from other organisations or other jobs they've done, but again, not, not to go and do but to say, okay, well, have we thought about doing, you know, right. have we thought about this or have we thought about that? I mean, you know, there's great examples at the moment around artificial intelligence and all these sort of things. But those are sort of things where a board member should be saying, thinking more broadly than just the organisation there and, and saying, well, have we thought about some of these things when it actually comes to the people running the organisation? Which is why that diversity of skills and the diversity of backgrounds and things is so well, important. Of, of course it is, because then you're going to get people coming to you with, different perspectives, yes. different skill sets, right? But it's really, really important that boards don't start trying to, to do. Right, yeah. right, absolutely. So to, to summarise then, uh, the board is, is they're setting the strategy, uh, taking the large picture view of the organisation, bringing a diversity of viewpoints, and the management team is making recommendations to the board, implementing that strategy and, and then reporting Co back. Exactly. Right, exactly. Which, which would require, when they're making recommendations to the board, sort of succinct uh, papers with information saying, this is what we want to do, this is why we want to do it, this is the, these are the risks and so forth. So the board has the right information to make an effective yeah, decision. Yeah, and actually this is, this is really interesting. It's an area that I spend a lot of my time coaching people on, Mark. And, and there's, there's a lot of a lot of good, really smart people get a long way in organisations, but find writing board papers really, really hard. <laughs> and I mean, the thing I the thing I would say writing a, like a good board paper is you need to begin with the end in mind, right? You start with a recommendation, and then you get in and build up 
the case for why that recommendation is. And be transparent. Um, about the risks and about so the forth. Yeah, yes. this is exactly right because I mean, a lot of you know, every decision you make, there's there's there's, there's always a counterfactual. And I think as a board member, what you want to know is that people have considered both sides of the coin, right? Right. And, and can explain the conclusions that they've reached. So it's not about, hey, this is the way to do it, right? And there's no other way. Of course, there's always another way of doing it. And yes. to your point, risks, opportunities should always be sort of highlighted in board papers. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, there's a, and there's really a right or wrong. I mean, the other thing yeah. is, right, a lot of board decisions, are really a right or wrong answer, right? There's an answer. Yes. Um, and as, as long as there's a credible path to get there, then I think that's really important. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much for your time, Stuart. It's no, been no, my, fantastic. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Mark. No, thank you very much for having me. Cool. I look Cheers. forward to seeing you on next episode. Excellent. Thank you.